Hey, it's Brian and Chris here from Resolve Technology. And today, Chris is going to talk about the vetting of apps, third-party apps, and connecting into your Microsoft 365 tenant. You want your IT people to just not allow easy access through third-party apps. There's a lot of AI stuff that we're seeing nowadays with clients want to leverage AI. And sometimes they have hooks in through these third-party apps. And I think Chris is specifically going to talk about Teams, but this goes for any type of app. You really want to make sure you have your settings and the tenant properly configured so that people have to request to have these 30 third party app integrations. Okay, Chris, take it away. Yeah, sure. The Teams meeting apps is what we're going to specifically focus on because there's some created by Microsoft. And then there's also some third party apps by, you know, independent app developers. And they might have various things. Like I think one AI one we set up, right, Brian, was called like Fireflies AI. And it does some like automatic AI-based transcribing of meetings. And, you know, it requires certain permissions within the Microsoft tenant where it could access their calendars and mailbox mailboxes. So you got, you kind of got to be, set, you know, aware of what kind of permissions you're just granting out. You don't want to really do that all willy-nilly. But like generally on one of our tenants here, if we come to permission po app permission policies in the team admin center, this is what, so Microsoft apps, we generally always allow that. We're not going to, you know, have that, you know, be a situation where like you only allow certain ones, but the third party apps are the ones we're more focused on here. Generally, we do something like this where you allow specific apps and block all others. And then you just, you know, there are ways to set it up where the end users can request the use of a third party app and then you approve it, or you could just sign in with the global admin. And like, you'll, you'll get a thing and it'll show all the permissions in Azure or Entre or whatever you, you want to call it now that say, oh, and it's going to access this, this and that, read access to that, write access to that. And then you would approve on behalf of the organization to allow it tenant wide. I guess this permissions policies is going away though. And you just do it for managed apps. So if I go on my demo tenant here, you'll see this. I just noticed this today. So I'm not sure. I don't see it in managed apps yet, but we come over here to manage apps, you'll start, you'll see all these app, third party apps, some third party, some Microsoft, and they all do, you know, various things within Microsoft Teams. I think one of the ones I noticed or I played around with mostly was, I think they added a Stack Overflow one that hooks into Teams somehow. It's been a while since I played with it, but you know, little quality of life features like that, some people, you know, prefer, and we're not opposed to giving them that, but there needs to be a vetting process if they're a third party app. Yes, good point. And I just want to add to that, you know, whoever approves of it, you know, your admin, we make sure we look at the, what it has access to, what it has read access to, what it has write access to, because it matters, you know, maybe it's uh, just getting first name, last name information and dump it into this third party application or just an email address, which you know, may not be a big deal. You know, there's a lot of stuff in a Microsoft 365 tenant, a lot of stuff in Teams, a lot of stuff in email. So you want to make sure that you read before you just click and accept all the terms. You yeah. know, you get to read through that information. And I would even take a screenshot. So like for us, you know, we usually take a screenshot of all that information and put it into our ticketing system in case we need to refer back to it, you know, because uh, what they say in there, I mean, that's what they're going to do to, you know, with their hook into the tenant. Yeah. Another thing is you can also create custom apps within the organization for internal use. So, you know, they rec they, um, they mentioned the power platform. So you got things like Power Automate, you know, there's a lot of, Thing, you know, low code things you can create within Microsoft 365 that a lot of organizations don't take advantage of yet. You might see it more in the enterprise space than the small business. But I see a lot of these third party AI apps. I don't think they're going to be around that long. Maybe I'm wrong here, but, you know, I think I see Microsoft pushing the, you know, co-pilot licensing now that it's available to everybody, you know, $30 a month. It, it's built into Microsoft. You're in the same ecosystem, you know, generally organizations kind of standardize on that. You know, you use Microsoft products. If you're on Windows and you use Office, you know, why get some third-party app when you can just use Copilot, you know, and have everything all hooked in together? Yeah, I I, I agree with you, Chris. Um, it's just, it just makes life easier. 
you don't have to vet it quite as much because it's all in the same ecosystem. It's all designed by Microsoft. It's designed to work with Microsoft Office and and everything that uh, all the little apps that are in Microsoft 365. So yeah, I, I, t I tend to agree with that. But th these are all, like Chris said, is he's basically getting to the point like, you don't want to create friction and, and stop this from happening. But you want users to have this sort of access. You want all your employees to have this access for productivity purposes. I mean, this is all this all this AI stuff. It's all about productivity, right? Yeah. And I mean, you can't just AI is not always right, though. A lot of a lot of people have, you know, whether they think it's the Terminator, it's going to take over and, you know, make us extinct. We're going to all disappear. But or it's lying to us like it's this, it's not a foolproof system like there's flaws in it. And I think organizations really haven't had that conversation yet where they, you know, they have to have some kind of AI policy in place. Like maybe you block AI functionalities, you know, chat GPT, uh, Google Gemini, Copilot. Maybe you don't want your employees just, you know, signing into their personal chat GPT account because they, you know, they pay for the $20 subscription and and putting potentially confident potential information into the prompts there. I think Copilot might be a little better for that because it kind of keeps everything, you know, in the organization there. You'd have to look through the privacy policy, though, if you wanted to know more about that. Yeah, excellent point, because a lot of this team stuff does tie in with AI, right? So yeah. Teams is, is like your dashboard, right? Dashboard for the day. And, you know, you have a lot of a lot of connectivity with that. So, yep. All right, Chris, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks a lot. All right. Have a good one. You too.